all right guys welcome back to another video so today we're going to be talking about the problem with endgame and gpo now as most players know once you get to the end game there really isn't much to do or much incentive to keep playing so i want to talk about reasons for that and ways to fix that for future updates so that once you get to the end game and once you're basically done with everything there's still reasons to keep on playing so before we get into that if you could hit that like button and that subscribe button that would be greatly appreciated let's get straight into it all right so the first point i want to get into is the pvp now i know a lot of players are going to look at me and wonder what am i talking about the pvp is probably like the main reason a lot of players come back to the game and the reason why they're still playing but there's also a massive problem with the pvp currently and that's there's literally no reason to keep playing it. the only reason you would play it is because you genuinely enjoy the combat of the game other than that you have no reason to step into arena literally none the only rewards you can get is if you come in top three or top five i'm not sure which one it is and you can pick a fruit you want and most players out there are probably just going to pick tori so they can trade it which is another problem later trading but that's literally it you have to get top five on the leaderboards in order to get a reward the average player is not going to try to get top five in a game just to get a reward they're not going to do that top five out of all the players in the game they're not going to try to go for that they're just going to play it occasionally and leave or they just won't play it at all because they have no reason to play it so obviously the problem is they just need to give incentives to play it aka rewards and some rewards they can give is skins fruits outfits visual effects on the character like you know say you get 50 wins you just have like a flaming head or like a bright light above your head skins i'm surprised they haven't added skins in the very beginning i'm genuinely surprised that seems like something very easy to add if you play a certain amount of matches or you get a certain amount of win streak you get a chance to unlock a skin or you just get a random skin give it to you or you roll a roller or you get points whatever they want to do they put a shot whatever they want to do and you put skins on your weapons because technically there are skins for outfits already you know the witch outfit and all the christmas outfits so having skins for your character doesn't really make sense also it's a custom character so they can just add skins to weapons like imagine you transform the scythe the way it is right now into goku black scythe or you transform elo's hammer into usopp's hammer from alabasta or the thriller bark arc simple skins like that would make people actually want to play pvp and change up their weapon like imagine you're able to actually unlock goku black scythe like people would definitely want to go for that 100 percent in a one piece game oh for sure and fruits just simply make fruits more attainable i've said this so many times just make give fruits for after a certain amount of win streaks like if you get a 50 win streak just get a give them a fruit it doesn't have to be legendary like the top five people just give them a fruit oh if it's 50 win streak they should get, at least get rare that's just my thoughts on that one next is going to be pve and in my opinion i think pve is in a way worse state in terms of endgame than pvp and one of the reasons for that is bosses there's literally no reason to play bosses at all after you get the drops you have no reason to return to a boss yeah sure help out your friends but after you're done with that no reason to return now the simple thing they can do is if you're fighting an elemental boss have a chance to drop their fruit a one percent chance like everything else you can get goro from eno you can get mara from that flame admiral simple things like that you can get gura from whitebeard it'll have players want to fight bosses more and more just to even have a chance like i said it could be one percent it could be super low if they want to just give players like a reason to actually want to go back to the bosses even if it's a lower ranked boss that they can easily beat just have them a reason to go back to it another reason dungeons dungeons take way too long in their current state especially if you don't have like a flying fruit like mara or suna it's gonna take a normal player with a regular fruit forever especially if they don't go on the coliseum map and they're like on the sky map or the grass map it's gonna take even longer probably like 20 30 minutes just to get through one dungeon so by the time they get to like eight hours they've only completed like six or seven dungeons and the average player is not going to be able to do that so a simple fix is to simply make it so after every 25 waves you get a point just simple point after you beat 25 waves not resetting on wave 25 you get a point no you have to beat wave 25 it would actually make players get past that wave because right now people just need to reset on wave 25 so just give them a point after they beat it and after enough points you can go into a shop and you just buy things from it buy like i said earlier skins fruits items whatever just simple things like that so that if you keep getting nothing from dungeons over and over again there's a system in place where you can trade in your time and your effort into a shop now most players are going to think well this is sort of like a pity system and in my opinion it really isn't all they have to do is make the points a certain amount like a decent amount so that players have to play a decent amount of dungeons like just for like a legendary fruit make it like 50 points that's you have to complete 50 wave 25 so that's a lot of effort you have to do or make it 100 it doesn't matter 
As long as they put in a system where players feel like they're rewarded for doing something and putting their time and effort in, people will always be able to go back to it and always do it and feel like they have a chance at getting something. And the last two are kind of minor, so I won't go too long on them, which is shit farming and trading. Shit farming has not changed since the game came out. It literally hasn't been touched. So I think they should just simply add another ship. Just add a bigger ship. That's all they have to do. And on the bigger ship, they can add a better incentive of having, you know, a higher drop rate than normal gallons. You know, have like a 5% drop rate instead of 1% of getting a fruit. And then they could also have the 1% drop rate have a chance of dropping an unobtainable item. Nothing too far back, obviously not like candy cane or anything crazy. Maybe like the latest one. So like if the Halloween update just passed and now we're in the Christmas update, you'll be able to obtain Jester Scythe if you missed it. And then once the Christmas update's over and the next update's here, you could obtain Christmas items from the ships. Simple things like that, just in case players missed it, they still have a small chance in order to get the weapons they want. Or the last point, they can go to trading. Now for an average player, I won't lie to you, trading is very confusing. They won't know what they're doing. They have no idea what values are. They have no idea why this is up here and why this fruit's will way down here. So trading, there really isn't much you can do about this because this is really just a player market. So there really isn't much things that devs really can do. The only thing that players can really do is just add, give other players information, which you can just look up YouTube videos on that. But trading, in my opinion, is, is something after you do a little bit of research on, you can probably do fairly well on it and get the items that you really want. Now, I didn't mention anything about Kraken or CVs farming or even new things like world bosses or random events. And that's because for one, Kraken and CVs farming, there really isn't much things they can really change other than like add like a Kraken or CVs lure. But other than that, the way it is, in my opinion, is actually quite fine. I may have said in the past they should probably change it, but actually it's a it's actually a really good system if you actually think about it. You need to get a high bounty in order to spawn them quicker. So it gives players an incentive to go in PvE and actually ship farm or fight players in the main mode. Now world bosses and events, like random events, and I was thinking about it, and if they separate it between C1 and C2, that could be very annoying because players would have to constantly switch from C1 and C2. One thing they could do is put every world boss in C1 and C2, like just have them be there at all times, like every single boss. And random events, I don't really see this being able to be in both Cs at once because in the second C, there really isn't much land other than Alabasta versus the first C where there's a ton of islands with a ton of buildings. So you would definitely have to keep switching Cs, which is very annoying. Unless they make the random events in the second C just completely different, like the first C ones are easier and the weak rewards and the second C ones are better rewards, which then I can see that being a better incentive to add them. But other than that, I feel like if they world bosses were to be added, they would have been added a long time ago. But Kraken and CB's lure is something that they can definitely add and, and definitely something that I can see them adding. But yeah, that's all the points I had for the end game. Let me know if you agree or disagree with me. Once again, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button if you did enjoy. And I'll see you guys next time.